As all the data points may vary, even though it may increment or decrement, when you draw a line at best fit, it only tells you the average acceleration as it only approximates it. After all, when you take a look at the acceleration at certain points, it is far different than what the final answer is. For these problems, you just have to keep on rearranging the equation. For the first one, you'll take Vf is equal to Vi plus A delta T, and you're going to isolate and solve for Vi. So when you bring A T over, it becomes negative. So Vi is equal to Vf minus A delta T. So 93 meters per second east, subtract 8.5 meters per second squared east, times a time of 4.0 seconds will work out to 59 meters per second east. As for the second problem, we don't need to rearrange. Vf is already isolated, so we just directly sub it in into the equation. As for the last one, we're isolating for time, and that's probably the most challenging one. I'll just erase what's on the left. So, Vf is equal to Vi plus A delta T. We first bring the Vi term over, so Vf minus Vi is equal to A delta T. And again, to isolate for T, we need to divide everybody on both sides by A. So delta T is equal to a Vf of 12 meters per second east, subtract 24 meters per second east, all divided by negative 0 0.20 meters per second squared east. And if all goes well, you'll end up getting 60 seconds, but again, 60 seconds, it's hard to discern whether it's one sig fig or two sig fig. And since 0 0.20 is two sig fig, your final answer should also be two sig fig. So the best way to represent this is to write it in scientific notation of 6.0 times 10 uh, seconds. Now you could also write it down as 6.0 times 10 to the 1. They're both correct. We first start off with our givens. What do we know? Our vi is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the 3 meters per second or 1,000 meters per second. Mill vf is 10,000 meters per second at 10 to the 4 meters per second. Acceleration is at 31 meters per second squared and we're taking that upwards is positive so you know what we could also write down u. There you go and we're looking for a delta t. So vf is equal to vi plus a delta t. We bring the vi over so it's vf minus vi is equal to a delta t. To isolate for time, we divide everybody on both sides by A. So delta T is equal to Vf minus Vi all over A, or 1 times 10 to the 4 meters per second, or 10,000 meters per second. Subtract 1,000 meters per second. Up. All divided by 31 meters per second squared. Up. Our initial answer is 290.3 seconds, but seeing that all your givens are 2 sig fig, our final answer should also be 2 sig fig. So that's 290 seconds. However, 290 seconds could either be 2 sig fig or 3 sig fig, so the best way to represent it is in scientific notation, which is 2.9 times 10 to the 2 seconds, and that will tell us a final answer in 2 sig fig. There's two different ways of solving this problem. The first method is just to see whether if your VF goes to zero. So given that your VI is equal to 90 kilometers per hour west, our acceleration is equal to 4.00 kilometers per hour per second east, 
and our delta t is equal to 20 seconds, our question is, is VF going to be less than or equal to zero kilometers per hour? Again, because the acceleration will result in something that's quadratic, it is possible for you to slow down, stop, and accelerate in the opposite direction. So that's why VF could be less than zero. But if it's greater than zero, then we know that the car is still physically moving. And that's what we're checking for. So VF is equal to VI plus A delta T. And you might be thinking, oh, I need to convert kilometers per hour into meters per second. And you could, but take a look at the units. They will work out in our favor. So VI is equal to 90 kilometers per hour uh, west plus 4.0 kilometers per hour per second east. I'll erase this line for now times 20 seconds and that will work out to 90.0 kilometers per hour west minus um, 4 times 2 is 80 and you'll see the seconds divides out with the per second, so it's minus 80 kilometers per hour west. And that's how the units work out. So in, that, in other words, after 20 seconds, you're still moving forwards at 10 kilometers per hour west. And that's why an accident probably will occur. Another way of doing this is, this time around, check to see, well, how long will it take? for it to come to a stop. Will it be less than or greater than 20 seconds? So we'll start off with our givens again. Uh, our VI is equal to 90 kilometers per hour west. And when we come to a successful stop, our VF goes to zero. Our acceleration is still at 4.00 kilometers per hour per second east. And we're looking for delta T. And will it be less than or equal to 20 seconds? Our question. All right, so delta T is equal to VF minus VI all over A, zero minus 90 kilometers per hour west, all divided by, and I'm just going to make the bottom negative kilometers per hour so that instead of east, we have it as west. Because if you get a negative time, well, that would be very strange. Um, in this case here, it works out to 22.5 seconds. So in other words, it requires 22.5 seconds for it to come to a stop. Unfortunately, the person only has 20 seconds to come to a stop. So, yep, they'll still get to an accident. So if you want to treat everything as a scalar quantity, well, you can just assume up as positive. That means your acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. At final height, it'll come to a rest. And the time it'll take to travel is 2.2 seconds. So we're trying to look for what the VI is. Alright, so VF is equal to VI plus A delta T. When you bring the A delta T term over, you get VI is equal to VF minus A delta T. So zero subtract double negative 9.81 meters per second squared times 2.2 seconds. A double negative will work up to a positive value of 21.582 meters per second. Since our givens are, well, the worst case is 2 sig fig. Our final answer should also be 2 sig fig. It's probably easier to divide this up into smaller sections and then calculate out the areas underneath the graph. So, first area over here is 2 times 3 all over 2. And if we look at the units, it's seconds times meters per second. So our final answer will still be in meters. So this works out to a Ford's displacement of three meters. As for the second component, 
it's 3 meters per second times 2 seconds, which works out to 6 meters. The third section is 3 meters per second times 1 second divided by 2 as its area of a triangle, and that works out to 1.5 meters. As for the last one, you could calculate out the triangles individually, or just treat it as one big fat triangle. And I'll just do that right there as a big triangle. So it's one half base of 2.0 seconds times a height of 3.0 meters per second, and that works out to three. So the total displacement is equal to your three meters plus 6 meters, plus 1.5 meters, plus 3 meters, which works out to 13.5 meters. As velocity is in the forwards direction, as is above the time axis, your displacement, well they're all positive, so they'll also be in the forwards direction. When you measure the slope of a tangent on a DT graph, you are measuring the instantaneous velocity. When you measure the slope of a tangent on a VT graph, you're measuring instantaneous acceleration. When you determine the area underneath the VT graph, it re represents your displacement. And remember, displacement also means change in position. I emphasize this because for the E, when you determine the area underneath the NAT graph, a lot of people think it's velocity, but that's incorrect. It works out to the change in velocity. As unfortunately, the area underneath the NAT graph will never tell you what your initial velocity was, but it'll tell you whether if your velocity has gradually increased or gradually decreased. And then that will that is all that it'll tell you. Uh, as for D, what is the area underneath the DT graph? Remember that the area underneath the graph does have its own corresponding units. So if this is a position time graph, we have time as our width in seconds and our height measured in meters. So when you calculate the area of this, you'll get meters times seconds, and that is not a unit. So when you determine the area underneath the DT graph, it represents nothing, as meters times seconds is not a usable unit. And that's it for the homework.